confident, vibrant, and quirky with an edge. This is 10 Minutes with Tiffany J. Minutes with Tiffany J features the inside scoop as she juggles the world around her, a nine to five, along with a handful of gifts and talents that will blow your mind. All things Tiffany J on her website at MissTiffanyJ.com. Now, let's get into the show. What's up, everybody? On my way to work, it's 2.01. I'm almost there, so close. I had to wait for my mother to get home so we could switch off from watching Sony I Talk with one of my good friends. Shout out to Olivia. I uh, appreciate you. Uh, we spoke last night and briefly this morning. And when I say this morning, I mean between <laughs> 5 a.m. or, you know, 5 and 7 a.m., let's say. So... She reminded me that I am a new mom. Like, I knew that, but she was like, no, you're still a fresh new mom with an infant. And you have to take time. You're still adjusting to everything. Like, you just, she just came into this earth. She's about to be five months old on the 15th. It's the 10th, so that's in five days. Like, we're still, we're still fresh out here. She's still drinking milk we not even on solids you know what I'm saying so like just she was reminding me you got to be kind to yourself you got to be gracious be patient with yourself don't think that you're gonna you know hopscotch and 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 boom be ready because this is the first time in a long time that she woke up at like five o'clock and was wide awake and ready to just be like hey so I was like, come on, now you breaking up my sleep. Now, thank God I didn't have to go to work at 9. I'm going, you know, at 2. And I said, okay, let me get up. Let me do all the things, which means to get her diaper, change her, get a full feed. And then within, she went back to sleep literally right on time, like right at, it was 5.59, 6 o'clock, boom, hit the pillow in her bed, and she was gone so I was just thinking wow <laughs> an entire hour and I, I I was hungry myself but I didn't want to go downstairs yet to make anything since everybody was pretty much still asleep so I I had these peanut butter crackers um, like cream, peanut butter sandwich crackers so I just ate one of those drank a whole bunch of water and I was able to go back to sleep because my stomach was like we're hungry we're hungry so I think we got up around nine nine something and I immediately I got her things together and I fed her first then it was time to just it was like countdown because pretty much from 10 to 12 I that was I was like I want to be ready by 12 o'clock two hours so I could either leave and meet my mom at church or I'll be ready by the time she gets here right so the the, the routine pretty much is feed her put the bottle to the side we what did we do did we yeah yeah so got the clothes together took I took my shower grabbed her got her in the shower with me washed her uh put her uh you know got her clothes and everything on you know you know what am I trying to say Uh, lotioned up diaper changed all that stuff fixed the hair put on whatever all the stuff you gotta do with the baby get her together right right and then I'm getting myself together, and I know that she's sleepy again. So, okay, put her down for a nap. That's when I, you know, I did my makeup, got my clothes together, and then I was able to go downstairs and make some eggs and waffles. And by the time I was getting ready to eat, because that whole, crazy how that whole thing was about, maybe 45 minutes or so, I always go back upstairs you know, to check up on her, and she was already up. So I grabbed her, and I finished eating. I was like, don't worry about clean it up. We'll get it later. And then after that, it, this now is probably a little bit after 12. And it's funny how I said all those things because I, oh, I also washed the bottles and everything. But it's funny how you do all those things. And I don't know where the time goes. It just takes like you don't think it's going to take a long time, but it actually does. Taking a shower, putting putting your clothes on, you know whatever all the things I'm not gonna go into it because you know what that entails 
But yeah, it just it just throws me. Sometimes two hours is not enough. And I remember when I was pumping, thank God that that you have maternity leave because there's no there's no way you 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 can't do it. You just can't. You pump every two or three hours. Get ready to ooh, there goes a spot right there. Pretty much clean everything and do the whole thing all over again. Right? So now that I'm at work, you know, I pump when I when I can. And when my body like signal, like it just I can tell it's like it's time to pump again. No, I'm not pumping every two or three. I'm not even really pumping every day, to be honest. Uh, but I did pump last night because I, you know, started leaking and I, you know, pushed the nipples together and boop, the milk was coming out. I was like, I guess we're ready again. So as long as I have milk, I'm going to still give it to her because it's always, you know, the best choice, beneficial. And I'm going to cut this right here. We're going to go to a break because I got to go inside. Y'all, they made a lot of money today. About $6,000 in one day. That's a lot of money. So I'm going to feel it in two weeks when all these orders are due. <laughs> So today's a better day, you guys, even though I've been up since 2.30 in the morning and it is now 3.06 in the afternoon. So I had to do a reset at my job, which caused me to be here at 5 a.m. And I also had to get up to prepare uh, Sony Eyes things. And then I won't be able to see them until I leave today at 6 and I'll be going straight to church and Bible study and I'll be meeting them there and then we'll, you know reconvene together at the house so one thing that I wanted to say that I said to one of my friends in our earlier conversation was something that I didn't do in my past that I am now doing I am no longer how do I say this I am making sure that I am full before I choose to take on or interact with someone else and it depends on what that is. Like if I'm at my job, then I'm at my job. But if I'm, if the phone rings and, uh, how do I say this? If the phone rings and I'm not in the space to pour into, then I can't take the phone call. I am either not emotionally stable enough to handle the conversation I'm either not in the space because I just finished either waking up, taking a nap, trying to go to sleep, trying to put her to sleep, just trying to sort through the day. If any of those things are present and I know I'm not going to be poured, poured, poured into, then I need to keep to myself. That is one thing that I used to not do in the past and something that I learned while I was in the hospital trying to heal was when you're at a space where you can't do anything you have no choice right and so then people have to come to you if they want to and if they really care then they'll be there right they'll come to you they'll they'll say hey when's the next time you know when can we link up is this a good time and then you you, you work it out and they come to you and then it works it you know and it's perfect i've even had um a mentor friend of mine say hey like I am creating space to make sure I can check up on you on you guys pretty much every week and I appreciate that because sometimes you get lost in the the hustle and bustle of the day and you just next thing you know a week done went by and you're like oh shoot I didn't even realize but that's how it gets like that y'all but that's one thing that I wanted to say Another thing that I'm working on, I don't remember if I mentioned this at the last episode, but I was told this in one of my touch bases with my manager, and it was about executive presence, which is a term that I had never really heard before. Started to look it up on YouTube and found like, oh, it's a thing. And my own definition, of course, I can look it up right now, but my definition is basically you have a presence that exudes, you know, extreme confidence people trust you because of that confidence you know what you're talking about you know what you're doing and it's kind of like you can walk into the room and everyone knows like 
they're the one in charge or they're commanding the space. That's what I call executive presence. Celebrities have it. Um, anybody in the entertainment industry, higher up CEOs, all of those people, they have that. So I want to make sure that I exude that. And I also, just before that conversation, the touch base, I had a talk with one of my good friends and we talked about like, what does it mean to be grown? And I think you guys remember this. So I think after those two conversations, that's when I internally probably did a lot of soul searching and it was like two days ago I was here it was very busy and my manager was like hey hey I see that presence and I was like what really tell me what can you tell me and then we all got busy again so we didn't get to like talk about it but I'm curious and then when I talked to my other friend about the stuff about being grown I told him yeah my manager mentioned the presence and he was like yeah he was like I can tell there's something different in you too and what else is also different is the fact that like anytime that I'm talking with a customer I might get a yes ma'am from like a few people and I used to I used to not want to hear that because I'd be like, oh, my gosh, that means I'm older or whatever. But no, it's just a sign of respect, really. And that's how some people were raised. Now, there is a thing where that's how some people were raised. And then there's a thing where people do it because they understand and they they see the presence that's been established. So it happened yesterday. It happened the day before. It happened today, like two and three times, just about with everybody that I'm talking to. And even like older people, and I'm talking about people in their 80s or 70s, right? They were calling me. They were like, yes, ma'am. And I was like, in my mind thinking, huh? Now, y'all know I ain't but 25. (laughs) Not really, though. But I was like, wow, I must be giving off something. And the other thing that I think it could be is I'm accepting. I'm accepting the motherhood. I'm accepting okay, I'm somebody's mom, I'm accepting like, okay, I'm taking care of another life. And it still probably won't hit until she gets a little bit bigger and she actually starts talking and then she calls me mommy. Then it's going to be like, it's going to be real. So I believe that when, when, when I start to accept my role in life and the fact that I'm connecting with people that are my age, that have kids, it's the same thing that you did when you were a kid and like, oh, you play basketball too? Oh, you doing this too? Oh, you're in the club too? You're just finding like-minded people that, you know, you gel with. And you can do the same thing as an adult. Let me turn this down. You could do the same thing as an adult. And I think it's the coolest thing because not that you, well, you need to belong somewhere. Everyone needs to belong somewhere. I think it's beautiful. That was another edition of 10 Minutes with Tiffany J. I hope you all enjoyed yourselves. I know I did. Now you can get more episodes on my website at www.misstiffanyj.com. But don't stop there. Hop on over to the music tab and check out your favorite Tiffany J record, starting with my latest singles, Work For It and Call Me, which is on all digital platforms. Also with a bomb video showcase on YouTube featuring the Queen City, Charlotte, North Carolina.